Hello, uh, my name is uh, Ophira Gamliel and uh, I am a, a co-convener of the program Religion and Global Challenges of the subject area Theology and Religious Studies in the University of Glasgow. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Saiko Yazaki, uh, my colleague, and uh, we are going to introduce uh, the program with you, but uh, I ask the Saiko to start with introducing the university. Thank you very much, Afira, and, and welcome to the Glasgow University. So the university was established in 1451. It is one of the oldest universities in the UK, and it is ranked in the top 100 of the world universities. And it is like quite research intensive universities, and it is called uh, Russell Group in the UK, and the University of Glasgow is part of it. And we have um, around 35,000 students from more than 140 countries. And as you will see in Glasgow, it is a very multicultural um, city and also multicultural university as well. And among the mem member staff, as you can see, um, it's quite international. And we are ranked in the UK's top 20 for graduate employability as well. And we really value research and not only research, but research with actual impact on society. And so it has, the university has been recognized for its world leading research and also its positive impact. And this course um, is also, this program is also about the positive impact on society and also engagements with society as well. And one of the things um, we are focusing on is, um, of course, tackling climate change. Um, and so in 2014, we became the first European university to commit to, um, uh, to fully divesting um, from fossil fuel industry companies. And we also endorsed the UN's SDGs. And so actually this year in 2023, If you could go to the next slide, um, we were just actually uh, recognized our achievements. And so according to the Times Higher Education World Impact Rankings, the university was ranked as 13th in the world and also top in Scotland and second in the UK. And because of the climate change activities we have been doing. And there are like certain specific um, points uh, we emphasize uh, like SDG 11 or SDG 16 or SDG 17. And but of course, uh, the recognition of our performance is a clearly good achievement, but we realize that it is not good enough and we need to continue our activities and our research and also sustain our commitment. And we hope that the, this new program is part of that um, universities and also the global engagement and um, effort to climate change as well. If I may just intervene here for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wonder whether our respective students are aware of what the SDGs are, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This is something very important for our universities and universities by and large in the UK, that we are trying to align our research as a university, as a community within Glasgow and within Scotland, with so many global collections to uh, internationally agreed, you know, to the consensus of how to achieve sustainable development uh, all around the world. So this is what it is about, and our program has a lot to do with it as well. Mm -hmm. And we're back to the university. Um, the university has a lot of um, collections and museums and art galleries. And that's also our um, world's largest display of uh, Whistler and Rennie Macintosh. And so if you're interested in art, you know, there's a lot of opportunity at the university. Yeah, Glasgow is a really wonderful <laughs> city. Mm, for, yeah, in the sense. <laughs> yes. And we are well connected um, with global in uh, international institutions from Asia, 
and in America and Europe. And uh, we are a founding member of University 21. And yeah, so th there are a lot of opportunities and connections um, if you're interested. Yes, and Universitas 21, just for your information, is one of those uh, research initiatives that are geared towards uh, tackling global challenges. So that also goes nicely with our program. Mm -hmm. And we also um, value student experience and this um, building is a new building and you will see like a very remarkable like a landmark at this moment um, just outside of the main gate. Very nice to teach and learn there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this an advanced research center is also uh, one of the new um, um, buildings of the university and especially uh, one of the, the aims of this centre is tackling global challenges as well. So this clearly aligns with our programme too. So uh, now I'm going to say uh, a few words about uh, our programme, which uh, I really uh, hope that uh, we are going to meet you uh, when it starts. Um, so theology and religious studies, this is the department in which we teach, and we are the oldest subject area taught since uh, 1451, which is basically the first department in the university. And we are very hospitable and uh, inclusive in our approach, uh, and student satisfaction uh, from theology and religious studies every year is uh, very high, sometimes even almost 100%. Uh, and the student community, our students are really lovely. Uh, it's a very active, vivid, vibrant student community that initiates lots of activities. We have a common room, a community room downstairs uh, with a kitchen and people can gather students and sometimes also staff gather there for joint activities. And even if you just want to, you know, make a cup of coffee <laughs> when you have some time that's available there as well. Yes, and that kind of um, corridor chat is actually really important and which was heavily, um, sorely missed during the COVID time. So we, we are yes. very pleased that that physical uh, interaction came back. Yeah, speaking of global challenges, you know, the, the common spaces are something that is kind of lacking more and more. It's more and more difficult to get into a community activities. So that is something that we are trying to foster. Uh, and about the program, so as it is called, Religion and Global Challenges, and you might have noticed that also in the media or in your own field, there is this kind of absence of how to deal with the religious attitudes, religious organizations uh, in different levels of global challenges. So this is a very um, innovative program um, and it looks into the influence of religions and cultures on people and the planet. Uh, our program is uh, aimed at professionals and practitioners from governmental, charitable, public and policy arenas, but we are also uh, very much interested in uh, deepening and broadening the horizons of research around religion in relation to global challenges. So we also hope to be able to train you uh, as researchers that may be looking into an uh, academic career in this uh, area. Uh, so why should you study this program? Uh, this program promotes religious literacy in international affairs. Religious literacy doesn't mean that you you know, learn how to read the Bible or the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or whatever text is there. It means that you understand how to approach religion from an academic perspective, from a religious studies perspective. And there are different approaches and uh, we, we usually uh, relate to our own field that's very interdisciplinary, isn't it, Psycho? No. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's learning languages like Arabic, like Sanskrit, like Hebrew or Greek, but it's also uh, learning different types 
of uh, academic approaches, research approaches uh, to religion. Uh, yes, because religion, sorry if I can add, yeah. the religion, religion and um, affect in every avenue of human life, so politics or society, any kind of um, society and human activities. And sometimes religion is in a very, is there in a very obvious way, sometimes in a very, you know, unassuming way. So religious literacy is a kind of trying to train students to understand the meaning of religion and also its impact on our society and our politics and um, including um, climate change as well. Yes, once you start studying religious studies from an academic perspective, you can't ignore it. It's everywhere, even in those spaces that are treated as secular. Uh, and also, you know, what we are going to try to do specifically in this program is to move through uh, the course material and reading materials to examine the response of religious institutions and actors to global challenges. And global challenges, of course, it's not only climate change, right? There are different types of uh, challenges, whether it is conflict, whether it is, again, politics, whether it is media, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and of course, the experience with COVID, which we can mention uh, now, uh, also showed this, right? There, were, there, were, there was a lot of religiosity in the way that COVID was tackled. Uh, the program uh, also employs uh, problem-solving approaches to the study of religion because we are interested in uh, examining those intersections between what we do as researchers and scholars and what NGOs or policy uh, makers, uh, decision makers, community leaders, what they do on the ground. So we would like to keep this kind of balance between cutting edge research and uh, involvement in society, or what we call here in the UK impact. Mm -hmm. um, so um, you can start seeing in the images that we use, of course, this is from the tsunami in uh, Indonesia in 2004, and you can see the prominence of extending religious institution. Uh, so our program in terms of teaching and learning uh, is delivered by international experts with links to uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, governmental organizations, uh, policy makers, and multilateral agencies. So all of us have some kind of connection to people actually involved in uh, responding to, preparing for global challenges. Uh, and you, as uh, students, will receive this expert tuition uh, that will train you in uh, applying uh, religious studies perspectives uh, to a wide range of global context, context and concerns. And one more thing about teaching and learning, uh, you will develop analytical and problem-solving problem skills that promote constructive and inclusive resolutions to dif difficult issues. And again, to mention the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, you see one of the issues in those goals that were developed using uh, consensual uh, international frameworks, both by researchers and policymakers, is how to respond to challenges while remaining inclusive, while remaining constructive, okay? So this is what we are trying to examine, both as researchers, but again, as practitioners. And uh, our experts specialize in a range of subjects, including human rights, sustainable development, migration studies, climate change adaptation, theology and ethics, ethnography, and global health. Structure. That's very important. Uh, well, we all have lovely ideas. We all have uh, experience and knowledge, how to transmit it and how to develop it along with students that's, that can be challenging. So how are we going to do it? The program is structured in this way. We have two core courses. The first semester has a core course on you know, general approaches to theories and methodologies in religious studies. 
And the second semester has another course of case studies. These are core courses that everybody has to take. So in the case studies course, we are going to examine how religious studies, methodologies, and approaches are implemented when we examine different case studies of global challenges, tsunamis, waste, uh, unsustainable development, uh, exclusive development, you know, and inequities, conflicts, migrations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we also have four elective courses. So you can elect from a pool of, of other courses, each year will have different offerings uh, in which uh, you uh, choose what is most interesting for you. For example, political Islam is one of the courses or religion and the environment, religion and health, uh, and global health, uh, law, migrations, religion and violence, uh, uh, etc., etc. Michael, would you like to say something else here? No, uh, I think there's also directed study as well. Yes, the directed study is basically uh, geared towards the dissertation. Uh, you have to write a dissertation um, at the end of the, towards the end of the course, so it's during the summer that you do that, and you will receive directed studies along a course, you know, during the year from a tutor that you select to help you uh, designing your dissertation and your own research and your own uh, study, what you as an individual student uh, are interested in, uh, you know, delving deeper into. So the core courses. The core courses uh, are research training and approaches to studying religions. As I said, this is uh, semester one. And this, both core courses are going to be delivered by a team of tutors. So each of us is going to give two sessions on a specific aspect of research training and approaches to studying religions. Uh, similarly, in the second semester, you will have the case studies in religion and global challenges. And again, each tutor, the team of tutors uh, of the course, is going to uh, give two sessions on specific case studies that will demonstrate and train you in how to employ those research training uh, and approaches to religious studies. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, team of uh, tutors. Psycho, would you like to say a few words? Yes, yes. So I was just going to say that uh, you know, in that way, the students can benefit um, from different um, um, members of staff, and also that may help students to choose the dissertation topic which is suitable for their interest and also um, existing expertise as well. So I think this is a great opportunity to be taught by different members of staff and learn from different perspectives. And it's not like um, we always agree with each other. And that's actually really an um, important aspect of study as well. You know, there are different ways of approaches and different ways of looking at things. And students uh, you know, just have to learn what the best way and then have to um, articulate their own perspectives and also um, defend their and will justify their sources as well. Yes, you can have a look at our uh, department uh, web pages and uh, you know get your uh, impression of our expertise and uh, research interests, publications, etc. So the optional courses. So just uh, to give you a glimpse to that, we have a course on migration and religious identities. Uh, we have another course on religions, cultures, and environmental crisis. Uh, another one on modern Islamic thoughts uh, and questions and challenges. Um, <clears throat> more courses uh, on religion and violence, political Islam, radical thinkers, and religion, health, and development. Uh, and if that is not enough, uh, for you, you can always look also at our other offerings uh, for level five students. And as a uh, master student, you are also eligible to take one 
level four course if you are interested uh, from offerings in our department or in uh, the school or in the college if that uh, relates to your own interest uh, and to the topic of course so yeah there are lots of options actually so much more um, that you can see here yes uh, but of course, the courses that we develop uh, are uh, specifically uh, targeted at putting, you know, connecting, linking religious studies approaches to global challenges. Uh, so, to say a few more words about the directed study, uh, that starts at semester two, when you start uh, getting more and more uh, specialized in a specific topic and then you select your future and you start thinking about your dissertation, how to approach it, there are different you know sections of the dissertation, how to write. So it's very important for us to train you in a professional academic uh, presentation of your own research. Um, Saiko, would you like to say a few words about it? Yes, I think it's very important to um... Uh, do you remember how many words for dissertation? Um, I can't remember the, the top of the head, but um, it's very important to to find, to be able to find a suitable topic and to work with the supervisor and do some decent research um, on that and based on what you have learned so far through all the courses and um, case studies and other core courses. And this is a really great opportunity um, for the student um, to do something, you know, that they are passionate about. And, you know, that may be useful um, for their further employment or um, further study. And, you know, we are quite excited about what kind of um, um, path um, the student would like to take after taking this course? You know, one of the issues that was very bothering me, at least during the COVID pandemic, is this idea of people doing their own research by going to, uh, you know, social media, YouTube links, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the amount, this is one of the problems that the uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, was, uh, you know, talking about the infodemic. The infodemic became in itself a global challenge, right? Misinformation, disinformation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so knowledge, you know, how to cultivate knowledge, how to transmit knowledge, how to sift knowledge from more of a noise, uh, that is also something that as academics, we are very committed to and that we hope to develop with our students. So your dissertation is the, how you say, the crown jewel in the study. Um, it's, I think, something between 20,000 and 30,000 words. Don't, you know, trust me on that. We have to go to the website. We have all those details, uh, how many credits and uh, et cetera uh, listed there. So that is what you are going to do in the summer while staying in our very beautiful Glasgow. So four optional courses uh, offer maximum flexibility in you selecting your own topic and your own interests, uh, enabling you to design uh, the program as fits your own career prospects and your, the environment you come from, your society, your community. Uh, you will be able to direct your learning according to a uh, specialist interest and professional expertise that you might yourself be bringing to the table. And um, again, you can also select a level five course from another postgraduate post program in the university. So it's not only in the college, but you can also go beyond to uh, social and political sciences or law or business school or whatever you find might be a good uh, complement to uh, what we offer in uh, pursuit of the question about religion and global challenges. Yes, and just to say that um, um, the idea is that the, the students can take ownership of the, the program because of this flexibility 
and so each student has different course um, to choose and so that you know they can create their own um, program and which is suitable for them yes um, and this uh, lovely image by the way at the background of the next slide before we are going to talk about your assignment maybe Saito you would like to say a few words about this uh, beautiful image yes yeah, so this is um, a technique called kintsugi and some of you may have heard of that and this is often translated as gold joinery so this is basically um repairment of broken pottery so you not know, those um golden areas so that was i don't know what kind of damage um this pottery had originally but that it was damaged and so using um this technique called kintsugi to put things together so this is just an image i often use um to show that not only repairment but also respect um for for the material and objects also um through kintsugi um according to the japanese tradition this pottery was given another life a new life and often the the value of pottery um is raised after being damaged and being repaired and being given this new life through kintsugi so this is yes kind of um the like nice image of respect and it's not only about not wasting and of course avoidance of waste is very important but why do we waste in the first place and why do we do we try to stop waste and how can we do that so you know this is there are a lot of philosophical um learning is there yeah it's uh also, the respect, you know, religious studies and everything to do with philosophy or arts or humanities, it's often perceived as, you know, very spiritual and detached from material existence. But actually, our program is, is designed and we are interested also in teaching and learning with you because we think that we cannot divorce what is spiritual or what is religious from the material world. And these are two intersecting aspects of our, you know, being human uh, and humanity. So we cannot say that religion is not related or spirituality is not related. In the Kintsuki tradition, you can really see very beautifully how matter matters, right? Material matters. And even the broken vessels, and in a way, it's like a metaphor about our condition at the moment uh, in the world that can be repaired and be made more beautiful so there are those really beautiful messages and deep and constructive messages that we can take from world religions and traditions and culture and this is one of the things we are trying to it's not only to see how bad religions are but also to see what positive impact they can have on our society if we focus, right, if we analyze it and focus and harness it to the questions about global challenges. So now let us become practical. <laughs> uh, and our assignments uh, are as follows. Um, and we are going, of course, to what we do is we build your development as a researcher and a student uh, throughout the course. We constructed our assignments in, in this way. You will have 10 minute presentations in each course. You will have to write a literature review or a report uh, of 1000 words in each course and a final essay for each course, uh, which is 3000 words. So of course you're going to be graded on, on each of these assignments, but the point is that you will be able to build your next assignment based on the feedback that your tutor gave you. So, the assignments are built not just, you know, to grade you or to, to tell you whether you're doing well or not. The assignments are built to develop you. And in a way, also us, we are also developing via these assignments, by these assignments are actually for us feedback that you give us on our teaching. We can see whether we were clear enough or whether we really managed to go deeply enough in order to develop our basically collaborative uh, learning and teaching experience in a way that is meaningful and constructive uh, and progressive, progressing towards the bigger, you know, vision of 
cultivating knowledge uh, and uh, producing and transmitting knowledge. Okay, career prospects. So what is this course good for? This course is good for uh, equipping you with the transdisciplinary expertise that is required to approach questions about religion and global challenges. You will be able to develop your graduate attributes and transferable skills. So if you want to continue in the academia and there is the need to develop this kind of knowledge, then you will be able to proceed. If you would like to take this to another occupation, uh, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a journalist, whether you are an activist or an NGO um, worker, uh, or you would like to lead your community through time of change and transformation, this is precisely what we are trying to do. Uh, so there will be we, what we are aiming at is to offer you different ways in you know tackling future careers. That's why we are also having all those different assignments, uh, not only writing but also uh, presenting, uh, uh, etc. And of course, looking for knowledge, uh, sifting for knowledge, uh, and so on. Uh, the program also provides the, this pathway for those wishing to continue to MPhil or a Master's in Literature or a PhD in a subject that is related to what we do. So back to the Sustainable Development Goals, and this is the broader vision, and that's where our program is also aligned to our university. The program is really designed for meeting the University of Glasgow's alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We are committed to this global movement that, you know, is spontaneously and sometimes also, you know, organized by governments uh, and other public sector uh, institutions to tackle the most important challenges facing humanity today. Uh, our efforts are focused on delivering real, sustainable and meaningful change, which will shape the future of our planet. And that is also the vision of our university by and large with all the different uh, new buildings and new uh, kind of institutions and frameworks developed within the university to think together how to uh, harness our own skills and inclinations uh, to this joint uh, collective um, effort. So our campus is really beautiful. It's a good place to think, to be inspired, to stroll down, especially in sunny days, but not only. Uh, so if you join us, you know, at least for this coming year, you will have this kind of inspiration that was cultivated through centuries, many centuries, uh, about uh, thinking big and deep. And we wish you, we really hope to see you uh, next semester when we start. Uh, really hope to see you here on our campus and we wish you a great year of personal and professional growth with our dedicated teaching team and inspiring uh, student community. Yes, yeah, so we very much look forward to welcoming you in Glasgow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Psycho. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.